Movie Podcast. So now we're waiting on Demel Dukes. Yeah, hello. Hello, Mr. Demel. Hey, how you doing, man? What's going on? Man, I'm blessed, man. How are you? I'm dealing with it, man, one day at a time and, um, you know, thriving under uh, strenuous circumstances and conditions. Yeah, so we're going to get into that, man. So um, you and I have never touched bases. I have no knowledge of who you are, what's going on with you. So, So please enlighten us, man. Okay, um, my name is Demel Legs Dukes. I've been incarcerated for 20 calendar years. I was uh, born and raised on the west side of Detroit. Um, I'm, I'm serving a life without the possibility of parole uh, for a conviction that I received in 2001 as a result of a uh, uh, robbery homicide. I was found out guilty of a felony firearm. Me and my two co-defendants were subsequently given life without the possibility of parole. Uh, you know, I always like to define myself as not that tragic uh, incident that happened that day. Very um, unfortunate, and I would never downplay the taking of a life at the same time. That's not who I am, uh, and I dare to say that's not who my co-defendants uh, are. We are not those persons that, uh, you know, basically got those convictions. And a little bit about myself since I've been in prison. Yo, man, I hit the ground running. Um, not only just law library trying to get this time up off me, but to live in a way that reflects all that I've said in the way of not being that person. So, you know, I'm really, really passionate about perspective. I'm really passionate about, you know, how I'm received. At the same time, I know once you get that kind of sentence, man, you know, you pretty much locked into what the uh, the documents say, documents being, you know, um, charging documents, uh, commitment of sentence to prison, uh, your file and stuff like that. So I'm really, really big on trying to speak for myself and um, change the narrative to really, you know, let people know that this is not who I am. And um, I'm a father of four. Uh, my son was five years old when I left. He'll be 25 on the 16th. So I think that's Friday coming up. My youngest baby girl was two months when I left. Man, she just turned 20. And we were talking about her uh, prom last year and her sister before her. They are uh, nine months apart. So my middle child is 21 years old, and we were talking about how my middle child was able to have a prom and then COVID, and my youngest child couldn't, and, you know, just dealing with that and, you know, her disappointment. So I have a vested interest in society, not just because of selfish reasons for my family, but the environment that my children are in and have grown up in without me being there, man. So, you know, without all of the, you know, pleasantries, just keep it funky, man. You know, I'm a regular person who just did some fucked up shit some years ago, but that's not who I am. That person is long gone. The 42-year-old that's on the phone right now talking to you, man, is suffering from what the 22-year-old did and uh, society at large. So, let's let, can can we talk a little bit about the twenty two year old for a bit? Absolutely. What 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 led what kind of lifestyle did Demel have that that led to the decisions that that twenty two year old made? The lifestyle. See, twenty years. This this is to get into it. I'm gonna say normal, but that normal is relative because the twenty two year olds today are are so so different, and especially since I have twenty one, twenty, twenty five year old, you know, as children. So, um the life that I lived then, we were trying to be older than what we were, yet at the same time we were still young adolescents. And what was going on in my mind's eye was I would imagine in most 22-year-olds that you got it all figured out, but you don't, you're don't. you not even conscious of not knowing shit. You know, uh, you know that you've got a, a perspective, but at the same time, you don't want to let the world know that you haven't got it figured out, so you put this bravado up. So the lifestyle that I was living was, you know, since sometimes I work, sometimes I might not work out with hustle. 
You know, I grew up on the west side of Detroit where, you know, hustling and, and, and working was, you know, synonymous. I know guys that worked at Chrysler but still, you know, did things on the side. So any way that you can, as we used to say back then, get it how you live. And my morals and my values were just like that, you know, whereas now, you know, I, I can have certain firm convictions. But back then, and I was still figuring it out and not uh, – being honest with the world and myself and not having it all figured out, you know, whatever the day would bring. And that's what led to the decisions that I made at that time. And I don't want to be flipping about, you know, some of the harm that I've caused, but to be very, very honest, that's exactly what was going on with me, man. You know, it was day to day. Yeah. And the, and the reason why I ask these questions is to log them because this, this is, this is the, it's the common theme of all of us, you know, um, yeah. Me, I done I done thirteen and a half years in in the federal system, okay. um, okay. for for conspiracy to distribute, uh, five kilos or more of of cocaine, um, right. th there was never no coke, there was never no there was never no evidence of anything other than a bunch of kids that I grew up with, all of us grew up together, and like you say, I'm okay. just I'm just day to day, I'm I'm hand to mouth, I'm just trying to pay my yeah, bills. Right and and yep. figure out who I am. I'm just a kid. I'm I was yep. I was 20 yep. 24 25 at the time. And and right. and again like you say, I'm thinking I'm I'm a grown adult and and I'm I'm trying to establish this family and all of these things and yet I don't even know how to bring money into the house legally. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. And yes, sir. I know exactly what you mean, bro. And then I get caught up in this here, and, and then my friends that I thought were my friends all turn on me and, and send me away. And, and then right. it's, it's, it's not only, it, it, was, it was not until years later that I realized that I had so many more options other than the ones that right. I thought that right. it was all that I had. But because I was right. surrounded by like-minded people, I guess, yes. you, you know what I mean? I, I just Absolutely. I, know exactly what you mean. I didn't know that I had options and I didn't have the proper I don't want to say I didn't have you know because uh, my father was in my life the whole time so it's not like I didn't have a father or a role model or anything like same that way. I'm, I'm, I'm the same way man just real quick to resonate with you on that man my pops just turned uh, 60 years old the other day man we had a, a very groundbreaking conversation you see what I'm saying? And, and so I grew up the same way. My mother and my father are still married to this day, man. Thank Allah. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, oftentimes it's not the stereotypical old broken home type thing. Man, things happen to people who otherwise have support. So like you say, you didn't know that you had the options. But yeah, I want to get in there and jump in and say this, that it seems to me that forgiveness, when it comes to those who might not have means and influenced by the way of parents and family affiliation, when it comes time for second chances, it's it's it's, it's something to be it's sparse, man. It's not you know they they they're not, they're not giving you that shit straight away as they would for someone who may have a person that's of influence. And now you talking about justice and equality and equity. H how do you reconcile that? So when you talking about understanding who you are now or who you were back then as the adult that you are now, we have to fight to say, hey, man, we were like those who are worthy of a second chance, but we just don't have those means. But anyway, I just wanted to, you know, throw that in there because that's very, very human. Yeah, well, no, there's no, no question. And what you speak of is 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 the one of the 48 laws of power. Right. I don't know if you're familiar. Yes. You've, so I am. So I'm shining the mask. You, you, well, not only that, but but we yeah. know it's human nature that you're always going to remember the bad that somebody right. causes. Right. The, you're, you're, we're, right. We are always going to remember the pain that somebody caused us. We'll forget tomorrow Absolutely. the good that they've done for us. But if they've done Absolutely. if they've done bad, we're going to remember that for the rest of our lives. That one time right. this person lied right. to us, that right. one time that this person stole from us. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So Absolutely. these are the things that we have to understand that we automatically are doing this and we have to check ourselves. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yeah, it's just uh, ironic that you say that because I was just reading this book uh, by Oprah and uh, I forget the doctor's name, Dr. Perry, something like that. It's called What Happened to You? And they broke down in their implicit bias and racism and implicit bias for all intents and purposes. Uh, we all have them by being a human being. If you interpret 
interpreting or uh, uh, in, um, encountering someone new, then obviously, you know, a little bit of a defense is going to go, well, wherein racism is more thought out. It's, you know, it might be irrational thought, but, you know, it's thought altogether. So when you talk about um, automatically um, having a little bit of an apprehension about somebody or a group of persons, you know, this comes to us by nature. But the problem becomes when someone paints that perception for a group of persons and then you can't or are unwilling to think outside the box. And, it, when, and you're talking about people who, for all intents and purposes, are underdeveloped young people. You know, you're, you're, you're putting a period on their life, yet you're sending them to a system that, you know, reinforces the idea that this is who they are, but in a negative way. Uh, being in prison and meeting a lot of different quote-unquote nationalities and different people. Listen, man, racism has its tentacles all over the globe, but it has a special brand in America. See, Americans, whether you're black, white, red, yellow, or brown, have this uh, unnecessary uh, uh, myopic view of the world. In other words, to say mom watching CNN is getting her uh, or mind and, and the imaging of black people through CNN, and it reinforces the idea that we might not want to interact. However, you have different places on this planet where people interact, and the racism is acted out differently and for a different reason when it comes to resources, when it comes to advantages in the society, but not just off of, you know, a casual acquaintance and interaction with one another. So what I'm saying is, man, when we don't know one another, when we don't have an opportunity to have a person like you, man, to provide a channel for us to voice our opinions and then say, hey, man, know me. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't get a chance to meet Trinity, if I didn't get a chance to chop it up with him on the yard, then we would think from a distance that we're, we don't share the same value system. And in many respects, we do. And me and him joke a lot about like, yo, man, you got a quote-unquote stereotypical black experience, and some of my experience is a quote-unquote white experience. But the fact of the matter is, man, we're human beings, and let us meet there. So I just wanted to, you know, say, highlight that point that one of the reasons why this stuff persists like that is because no one's hearing one another, and we're not interacting. Now, this thing about, uh, you know, these neighborhoods that have this... block or in the zone uh, doesn't support police. That's not true. I was watching the other day, they talking about, yo, we had a weekend where Chicago had went through what it went through, and it was just a, a hell of a weekend. But as I'm watching this, I'm seeing police everywhere. Well, how'd they get there? People from the community called them. So when we watch this, we have to put our thinking caps on people to say, well, listen, 
I don't think that those people don't want police or defund police means this, that, or the other thing that has been co-opted by the conservative Fox News channels and the like. No, what we don't want is police brutality. What we don't want is a uh, an environment by which you can see somebody, Derek Chauvin, put his knee on this man's neck and basically smush him to death, and there's a possibility that he won't be charged. Now, subsequently, he did, and he's about to get his time, got his time, or whatever the case is, but it was really shaky in the very beginning because we have an intimate relationship with injustice. So what I want to say to us when we get these images, let us question what we're looking at and fight against the um, sensationalism, Let us uh, the social engineering that they're trying to do, man, and just use what we know from our experiences of being alive. You know full well, man, that the block don't support uh, defunding the police in the way that they're saying it. How do you know? Because how the hell the police get there? People calling them. That's number one. Number two, the police push back. They say, well, when crimes happen over here, we can't uh, get any suspects because there's a no snitching policy and uh, you don't get anything done, community, so you're not working with us or whatever, whatever. Well, okay, well, what happens now when one of yours get in trouble and you put up the blue wall of silence? It's the same shit. And the way that the human relationship works is if there's no trust there, then there's not going to be any building there. That's like being married to a woman who's a habitual liar. How the hell do you think that marriage is going to work? So now you have persons who are entrusted legislatively called police that are not trusted because sometimes they don't do trustworthy things. And then the societal ills of robbing, killing, uh, all the other pillaging and stuff that goes on is already being acted out in the community and no one's hearing in each other. Uh, each other. So how do you get to a common ground? You get to a common ground by not locking up the person because when you lock the person up, you're still not locking away the social ills. And I think uh, the great late Maya Angelou uh, said that, that you lock an individual away, but you don't lock away societal harms. And I'm probably, you know, not saying it in verbatim, but that's what she got at. So you can lock me up, man. I've been gone 20 years, man. My neighborhood is still a high crime area. And I remember when I was being sentenced, the prosecutor going to say that me, since we had been in the county jail for 13 months of waiting this trial, that crime had gone down 12%. And he's throwing porn on the pudding, you know what I mean? Even though we had a mandatory life sentence, and we'll get to that in the conversation hopefully coming up, but he didn't have to say no shit like that. As if, you know, me and my co-defendants added 12% more to the crime in that area. Well, I've been gone 20 years, motherfucker, and it's still like that, if not more. So what have you effectively done? So, you know, I, I think that we have to, when we're being bombarded with these images, man, we have to now think for ourselves, and it's very, very difficult to do in an information age when you're just being bombarded with a whole bunch of bull. Yeah. I mean, that, that's spot on, D, for real. And, and well... <laughs> Well, let's get into let's get into your life okay. sentence and and um because okay. I don't I, I know okay. that's the most important thing but I did want to just touch basis on who you were the yes. the fact that you 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 are articulate you are intelligent and you are aware of what's going on in the world so yes, I think we've cleared that up and um okay. let it let it go man let let okay. what 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 can we do for you okay now in in my scenario I'm not arguing innocence. I'm not arguing, hey, man, you got the wrong person. What I am saying, in fact, is that a harm was committed, yet literally I am convicted of aiding and abetting an armed robbery homicide, which in Michigan and most jurisdictions that still have felony murder on the books, that's a classic felony murder charge. And felony murder, for those that don't understand, is simply this. If someone is killed during the commission of a felony, all those that are participants in it are, in fact, guilty, and they raise the level of intent to first degree. And in Michigan, if you're convicted of first-degree murder or first-degree felony murder, you get an automatic life imprisonment without the possibility to parole. Don't pass go. Now, the problem with that is is when they enacted this statute, uh, they were very punitive, and it was it was designed to punish more harshly uh, persons who were acting in a, a, a reckless way. But... It has become now outdated, and it doesn't take into account individual culpability, which every other jurisdiction in this nation basically understands. And individual culpability is basically, man, do the time for what you did. And doing the time for what you did uh, had uh, degrees of punishment. But when you have a mandatory life without the possibility of parole, there's no degree. 
of punishment because you're automatically given that. Now look at this. Because the principal, the quote-unquote gunman, was 17 at the time, and I was 22 at the time, he has been now resentenced to 28 years because of the juvenile life for law. Now, this does not mean that after 28 years he automatically gets out of prison, but what it does mean is that he has the opportunity to basically, you know, be considered or, you know, be given a parole. Now, because I was a few years older, there is no way now, avenue, after I've exhausted all of my appeals and my appellate remedies, for me to be able to get out of prison. So now the question becomes, okay, the actual quote-unquote killer, and I'm not calling my man, this is my guy, man, I love him, we grew up together, and he was underdeveloped like I was underdeveloped, and, you know, maybe a, a lesser degree than me because we, you know, some, some years apart, but acting together in concert, man, we were pretty much on the same emotional and intellectual level at 17 and 22 years old. But anyways, the actual killer is given the opportunity to have some semblance of life, whereas you telling me to die on the bunk? No, I'm not throwing a pity party and playing no fucking violent hands for myself. I am asking this, though, to society. At what point do we start locking up who we are afraid of and keeping those who we are mad at in here? So one of the things that can be done, California paved the way. California had the exact same problem. And what the legislators did in California was they got together and they, in the spirit of a case called People v. Brown, or, you know, people in the state of Michigan, uh, the state of California versus Brown, uh, in that case in 1983, I think it was out there, they said that they, being a uh, California Supreme Court said that felony murder basically was too harsh and, you know, we need to set up some equity uh, to allow for individual culpability. Well, it took California to 2018, 2019 to write the law in the spirit of that uh, Supreme Court law. Well, in Michigan, it's the same shit. People versus Aaron come out in 1980. Michigan Supreme Court says that uh, 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 felony murder is a theory that... Uh, and it punishes too harshly. But yet you still have, in 2021, people like me and others in this state serving life without the possibility of parole. Hmm. And the legislators, for one reason or another, have not gotten together to make the law enforce the Supreme Court's decision. Now, I'm looking at Maya Moore's 30 for 30 last night, man. And I'm looking at how my man, I think his name is uh, Jonathan Irons was railroaded at 16 years old. How the fuck you give somebody 50 years at 16 years old? They gave my man on this case with me, my brother, my, my, my loved one, life without the possibility of parole at 17. You give me life without the possibility of parole at 22. Yet your laws, your case laws, so it's hypocritical. There's, there's not a, a, a harmony. Now what happens when the society's sentiments change? What happens when people are beginning to question Hey, man, is that right? Hey, man, how do we get like this? And so when I'm in a position now to ask for equity or ask for equality, it automatically puts me in the position of subordination. Mm. And then those that are being asked has this unnecessary, unnatural parental control to even have the ability to say no. How the fuck is that even possible? Why would you say no? How are you saying no? Yeah. Justifiably. You know what I mean? So, so uh, simply put, what the society could do for me and for those that is similarly situated, because I don't speak just for myself, man. I'm speaking for the lifers. Amen. And I'm not talking, you know what I mean? I'm speaking for the guys, man, who done died on their bunks, man. My man Thomas Turner, man. May Allah be pleased with his memory, man. This man was the same age as me, man. We used to tear the weight pit up 10 years ago, man. He just died from COVID. This December, my man Sylvester Mott Bay, man, rest in peace to my brother, man. May Allah be pleased with his memory. This was an older head, man, who guided me when I come through the penitentiary, man, as a young man and showed me how to shave, man. I didn't have no facial hair when I come to prison, man. I had a full beard, man. It made sure when we had razors in here, showing, hey, man, you want to go with the grain, man. You know, some, the white guy can go against the grain. Brothers, you can't do that. You know, it's those things like that, man, where it turns us into men. And I had to have fathers in prison. And these men are now gone because of this disease, this, this virus. But what, getting back to, to what, what could be done. But we ain't that crazy, though? Like, but, but ain't that crazy, yeah, though, is, is yeah. you're, you're in prison seeking, getting fatherhood, and yet your children yeah. are in society yeah, and can't yeah. receive that same fatherhood. Yes. Man, that shit eat me up, bro. It eats me up because I have 
a, a wealth, I believe, of uh, experience and uh, knowledge, and I, I have, I'm desirous of it. But if you ain't got the money and the means, man, listen, man, I'm five hours away from my family, man. You know, my mother just had open heart surgery twice last year, man. Hip replacement and all that. She can't sit for five years to uh, five hours to come up here. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the relationship, but that's another, because I want to talk about that too if we have time enough to talk about how, you know, staying connected. I have a movement called Free People, Free People. And I believe that, and I'll get into that in a minute, but getting back to what could be done, man, we could put a little bit of pressure on our legislators. You see what I'm saying? We could, I, I don't want to use a platform like this, man. I want to thank you for allowing me to do this, but I can use this platform, man, to show that, hey, man, I, I, I'm worthy. My life is worthy of being saved. And that Mr. Zabib's death, man, be not in vain. That this man didn't deserve to die. But I'm going to be honest with you. I was not the one who actually killed him. But I was an active participant in the robbery. So I get that. And I've served a life sentence. Because that 22-year-old that came in here that got that natural life bit has long been gone, man. I'm, I'll be 43 in October, man. There's no way that a person in society is the same. Hell, six months. I was reading this book about epigenetics, man. They say every 90 days you got new cell growth. You know what I'm saying? So when you're talking about life experience in penitentiary, man, I'm well beyond that. I have children that's the age that I am now. I'm a father. I'm conscious of what the hell is going on around me. So my point being, and I'm going to end on this note in that, is that the people can, we can try to get like a change.org wherein we can uh, uh, locate and highlight some of our uh, elected officials and just simply ask them, man, to do in the spirit of what the Michigan Supreme Court already done. Just put it in legislation, man, and let guys get an opportunity. Put, you, that's what you got the parole board there for. Let guys argue for themselves and show for themselves a way to get out the penitentiary, man, and then let us be the uh, answer to a sin sick world that we helped to create, but now we have the answer to fix because apparently they ain't got no answers to this shit, man. You can't have no answers for it because crime is still going on. But we stop stuff all day. All day, every day, man. This location is on lockdown, not for security reasons, but for health reasons. And it is because we want to go home. We don't want to get to a point, man, you live violently for so long, man. You don't even want to see this shit no more, man. Hmm. You don't even want it around you. I don't even want to watch I don't even want to watch that shit on TV. You know what I mean? You see what like I'm No question, man. And it's a full time job. And and the thing of yeah. it is, is is D like I'm 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 overwhelmed by what you're saying because you you repeat exactly what it is that I say in the sense that listen mm -hmm. and just like Trinity just said, the, the we used to have a saying. I don't know if if they have it up there. I'm sure they do. But we used to say that like all of society needs to come through the pen. Like we need to take these motherfuckers and send them through the pen so they can understand not to lie, not to steal. You know what I mean? Yeah. How to take care yeah. of themselves and yeah. how to how to be yeah. a peacekeeper. Because like yeah. you just said, when when you sitting here watching violence day in and day out, like you don't want to be part of that no more. It's nah, like man. it's like nah. it's like listen, man. You stepping on my shoe could result in people losing lives. So what can we do right. to? To, to squash right. this like okay my bad i'm sorry i was at fault yeah. and and that's and that's all it takes you yeah. know what i mean ain't no doubt man ain't no doubt ain't no doubt i think um we have to rethink the system you know i'm hearing a lot about this reform and reformation of the criminal justice system and prison system the, the system is doing exactly what it is designed to do man so if you were to reform that shit it's going to have a deformity to it you have to deconstruct and transform the system. And in doing so, man, what you're essentially doing is changing people's minds. And when you start talking about people's minds, now you're getting into the psychology. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people don't want to fuse and work with when it comes to legislation. And dare I say, when it comes to disenfranchised poor people. When you're talking about people of color and you're talking about disenfranchised poor people in general, you don't want to extend the same uh, 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 pleasantries or the same uh, uh, forgiveness. It seems to be, like I said, sparse. So we have to ask ourselves, how the hell are we looking at our society? Now, I'm not sitting up here, you know what I'm saying, playing no violin. I keep saying that because I recognize and I understand the humanity or the lack thereof 20 years ago that I may or may not have had. And I'm not trying to over-intellectualize. Like, you know, you got some people that's like, listen, man, you can talk all that fancy shit you want to, man. You did this and that and the thing, man. You lay in your bed. Okay. 
Well, let's look at from a holistic standpoint. The body has a natural filter called the liver. And the liver in and of itself is designed to take toxins out and then now take those toxins and excrete them out so that now the body can function properly. What if prison was like the body? Mm. When you come in here a broken person, a toxic person, you have enzymes called people and programs mm. that take those toxicities out of you. And then now what you excrete back out to society is something that is good for society. Why won't you do that? Why don't you want to take the time now? And when we think about investment in this country, first thing we think about is money. Everything is money. Now, you don't have to invest Hmm. money alone into this shit, man. You have to invest time, energy, and thought outside of what you have been thinking. Because what they have been thinking does not work. How do you know it doesn't work? Because you're seeing (laughs) a society that is unraveling at the seams. I can, when we get off this uh, uh, hookup right now, you put on the news and look at the latest and you tell me if what they have been doing is working. And we, the people, uh, uh, so cliche, have to now push back against the narratives of what's being given to us. And we have to be involved, man. The young people have to be involved. Mm-hmm. They have to, and I'm not saying that you got to, you know, grab a picket uh, sign or, you know, but you have to know what the fuck is going on around you because if you don't, then a reality will be created for you. And that's what happened to us. I would imagine that's what happened to you when you were younger, man. We weren't cognizant of what was going on around us, so a reality was created for us because we got caught in a jam. Amen. And self-preservation takes over. You know what I'm saying? So ain't nobody going to keep it real when the shit start going down. But my point in saying all that is, man, this reformation thing, we have to change the language even. Now, I know that that's not going to be easy because, you know, it's, it is what it is. Prison reform is, is part of the American lexicon. But what it means to me is rethink the way that we uh, uh, do prison. I'm, I'm going to end real quick because I want to say something real quick about uh, a woman by the name of Natalie Holbrook, who is the uh, president of um, the Michigan chapter of American Friends of Service Committee. Uh, American Friends of Service uh, 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 Committee, I want y'all to look that up, Google them, look at them, and they're very, very inspirational. They're very hands-on with prisons and whatnot. This woman, white woman, who... I, in my humble opinion, man, she got power on the yard. And what I mean by that is, man, she helps so much and loves so much that we rock with Natalie. Mm -hmm. Natalie told me in a meeting, she was teaching us how to facilitate classes, okay? And in this facilitation, uh, she's giving us tips on how to, you know, deal with, you know, the material and whatnot. And she said that she is a prison abolitionist. Now, mind you, man, I had been in prison at this time probably like 19 years, and I had to stop her from her, you know, dissertation. I'm like, hold on, what do you mean prison abolitionist? She said, I believe that prison should not exist. Now, now, now listen to this now. I'm in prison, and I could not wrap my mind around an America that doesn't have prisons. Hmm. I said, hold on, you mean like prisons not at all? Like, what do you mean? Make me understand that. And she said, yes. I believe that prisons should be uh, abolished and we should do this, that, and other thing. She went up into a spiel. And as I, I'm listening to her, I'm like, man, this is too lofty of an idea. This lady got to be crazy. But then I went back and reflected on it, and I'm still reflecting on it years past. Imagine now my ancestors being in Virginia on a plantation five generations into slavery, and it's 18, let's say, 60. Right? The Emancipation Proclamation hadn't been signed yet. And there are some people running around and saying, hey, man, I believe that slavery should be ended. You had people that could not wrap their mind around the reality that chattel slavery would end as they knew it. And I had to now come to a glaring and shocking understanding that I have to change my mind, even with the people that's trying to help us to get out of prison. And I just want to use it because that was a hell of a, uh, a, a revelation that I had to come to from outside of the prisons. So when I say free people, free people, man, it took someone who has that was free in thinking to change my perspective on where I even sat in this world and in my condition. Man, it was a hell of a thing when I really broke it down, man. Yeah. No, and 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 that's I, you, again, you're spot on, homie. You know, and it's it's like I say, and and it's it's I'm not I'm not organizing no rallies, right? I'm not I'm not having my people stand out in no hot sun with no sign. You see what I'm saying? Because and and, and I tell people on my channel, and I say it now, I do not negotiate with terrorists. You see what I'm saying? So the the the, the thing of it is, is that. You have shown who you are. 
And for me right. to keep coming to you and asking you for change, I have a better yeah. chance of going to Jeff Bezos and asking him to change his business model. Because right. I, I've done right. I've done subscribe to the fact that you know, we keep asking for change and we keep saying that the system isn't working. But I think what we need to realize is that the system is working as perfectly as they want it to work. So, so when we're going to them and we're saying, man, listen, the system's broken. They're just not in their head. Yes. But in their mind, they're like, yeah. no, it ain't. This shit is That's working right. perfectly. That's right. So, <laughs> so in order to change this, right again, this right. is, this is why I'm doing right. the channel and I'm bringing the, these, these convicts to you so you can hear okay. from their own voices, okay. right? Yes, we sir. have to unite America. We have to bring yes. our communities together. We have to put aside race. We have to put aside uh, uh, culture. We have to put aside religion, put all of that stuff aside because Absolutely. the baseline fact is, is we're American and this is happening yes. to Americans. You see yes, what I'm right. saying? So yes, we have yes, to sir. come together. We have to provide our own community leaders, yes. right? Just yes. kind of like how yes. prison. And again, this is what I'm trying to do. D is, is show that how we live in prison is how they yeah. want us to live out here. Same yeah. way. Yeah. We have yeah. to we have yeah. to run our own communities. We have to That's have right. our own community leaders, our own cars, if you will, that get up right. and, 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 and represent our communities. We need we don't Absolutely. have no leaders out here, dog. Absolutely. Now now isn't that ironic that the same very people of whom broken the social contract so to speak, of society and being placed in an environment by which all intents and purposes are uh, for the quote-unquote bad people have something to not offer to the society that they were cast out from. And I believe in all freedom fighters, man, wherever they reside, past, present, uh, or, or in the future ones, regardless of who they are and what their ideology were, if you're fighting for freedom, and I mean not only freedom from incarceration, man, but freedom from a broken mind, then you are my spiritual leader. And we're all human beings that happen to be inculcated into a culture of America. And no matter where you live on this planet, you have to have air. You have to have water. You got to have some type of shelter. And when you interact with people, the fundamental principle is you want to survive that interaction, whether it be literal survival or you want to survive it emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. So if we can come together from a human perspective, one of the things that allows for people to give injustice to other people is when they other people, meaning then that you're not of my tribe. You're not of my respect level. You are other. And when you come from that perspective, you run the risk of having the shit that we have in the way of social unravel and uh, uh, injustices in many forms. Now, that's not to say that you're going to have some underdeveloped people. There may be some, some people that got their shit together. They're just sick and whatnot. You're going to have some societal ills. And these societal ills will, in fact, uh, disrupt and put dis-ease amongst the society. But the question becomes, what do you do? with those people in the wake of your resources? What do you do with those people in terms of your ideas? Question becomes, do you want to fund their life for the rest of their life after you, you already decided that, you know, they shouldn't be amongst you? That, that's not even, that, that doesn't make sense. Uh, in Michigan, 37% of the population is either longer determinate sentences or lifers, meaning that you got 20 or better or you got life rather with or without parole. Mm. Each person, it takes $36,000 per inmate. That's $1.9 billion roughly to take care of some people of whom you deemed to be <laughs> irredeemable. Now, America is a capitalistic society. We have to ask ourselves, is that economically feasible? Then we're law, a land of laws, so to speak, right? Or literally, they say. I was looking at Bill Cosby the other day, and they were talking about his lawyer saying that the Bill Cosby didn't win today, the Constitution won today, and all of the pundits outside of the, you know, morality or whatever. And I'm not getting off into it one way or another, supporting him or not supporting him. That's my personal view one way or the other. But what I am saying is that there was a sentiment talking about America is a, a, a land of laws. Well, what happens when you're showing that it depends on how much money you got, how much status you got, the law can bend to your favor? It disrupts the trust and it disrupts the community just like those who are robbing and killing. 
what's the difference between a person that got a gun in his hand or a person that got a suit and tie on who signs a damn bill that is basically criminal in nature and kills a generation of people and not just interact with you and unfortunately harm one individual? You know, and, and we're seeing that in real time. And I think this is why the, the country is, and the world even, you know, you got people in Spain that saw that shit that happened with uh, uh, George Floyd. You got people in Japan, and they had outpouring support that uh, George Floyd's family did. It is because, man, from a human being perspective, man, shit's not right. And you don't have to be a scholar. You don't have to be, you know, one of these things to know this shit ain't right. And your feeling yeah. tells you that this shit ain't right. And, and and people people ain't making they're not making the connection you know like like you have Candace Owens you know and I agree with a lot of what she says politically mm-hmm. right but mm-hmm. however when it comes to when it comes to 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 black culture like I'm yeah. more experienced with that than she is you know what I mean oh, and and yes, sir. and and because because she's sitting here and she's trying to criminalize George Floyd and and how are we you know um um you know uh, just, just idolizing a criminal and things of that nature. And, and what people aren't understanding is it had nothing to do with George Floyd. It was, right. it was the millions of other George Floyds that That's happened. Right. You see what I'm That's saying? Right. And, and it was, it was this yeah. George Floyd that, that mm-hmm. broke that straw, that, that, that was just enough. There was just going to be no yeah. more. You, you see, know what the, I mean? The timing, the timing, the technology, all of that because COVID had set people down and what happened mm-hmm. was we were able to now focus our attention because you were forced to see it you could and put it like this black folk and poor and disenfranchised people of uh, 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 the like who knew this reality like you say those other George and millions and other George Floyds we knew this to be the case mm-hmm. we were now sitting <laughs> back seeing people who was acting like they didn't know what the hell was going on oh my we god see, does that stuff really go on Come on, get the hell out of there. We've been telling you this shit in rap songs from the absolutely. 80s, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, bro. Listen, listen. So, so we're watching you watch this, and you can't flinch. You can't turn away. You can't say that you didn't see it. And what we saw was an outpouring right, of support because he was a human being that happened to be wrapped up with the racial component. But the fact that George Floyd was squished to death, it would have been just as shocking if this man was a Caucasian. And if Derek Chauvin was Derek Chauvin, it's not right. And when you have an environment by which the possibility of this man not being charged, that is what was so precarious and what made people respond because they say, hey, man, we can't let this one get away from us. Now, how do you fix that? Well, there's no simple fix. But what there is is a common ground to say, man, let us come together as human beings. Now, human beings in a society, we all have different views. But once again, in the the law of nature, meaning that all things being created equal and equally created, what we have to wrap our minds around is, is, man, sentimentalities change. And if you're going to have a a sentimentality change, you're going to have to have legislature and law reflect that. Real quick point. Joe Biden come out a couple of weeks ago talking about crime in, 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 in these cities. And I'm not going to lie, I'm anticipating him saying, yo, we're going to, you know, lock more people up. He changed his, well, I can say changed it too, but he's talking about redefining what law enforcement is and start to funnel some of that COVID money that they got extra and put them into community activists. I said, wow, you know, it's a start. Now, I'm not, you know, Democrat or Republican, whatever. I'm not even into that in terms of political affiliation. But what's right, I'm about the Justice Party. And that's, a, 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 it's on the road to it. Now, conversely, right off the bat, the, the, your Candace Browns and the, the, the Leo 2.0s and all these clowns, they are not our leaders. You hit it dead on, bro. You said that we have to be the leaders. The leaders got to come from the block. The leaders got to come from prison. Candace Brown ain't in prison. Leo, what's his face? They, they're not our leaders. And we got to stop looking to see people on TV and start looking in the mirror. If I could bring leadership from pie in the sky and put leadership in your head. If I could take uh, a leadership from off of TV and put them in the mirror, now I'm putting onus on you. I'm empowering you. And we don't have to listen to them. Only reason they get ratings is because people are that are not connected to what we connected to, which is the block, I call it, or some neighborhoods where I don't know what, you know, the different vernaculars throughout the, 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 the states, but I call it the block. We're connected to the block. And the block don't give a damn. I mean, if you would say Candace owns the half the people on the yard, bro, they don't know who the fuck you're talking about. 
You see what I'm saying? But we're connected because we have our finger on the post because we have a vested interest. But we have to now become, not you and I specifically, but the neighborhoods have to be uh, the leadership. Yeah, no, to you're, you're, back control of your household. you're spot on. And we like, we just turn your fucking TV off, man. For real. Just turn, <laughs> just turn the shit off. <laughs> Because nothing good comes out of it. Nothing good comes out of it, man. Nothing good comes out of it. Let me let me say this. Let me share this story, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was it was it was my my son, my stepson at the time. It was his it was his ninth birthday, I believe, right? One of those birthdays around there, and I had got him a go kart. So I'm test driving this go kart. Now I'm not in the hood. I'm at at my my partner's house that has yard with garage and all of that stuff. So got some property. So I'm out here and I'm test driving this go-kart. Now I take the go-kart out of the yard and I go into the street and I do a donut and I come back into the driveway. And just as luck has it, just the the story of my life, an officer cuts the corner as soon as I come in the street. Right. Right, So so now this officer comes and he he, he follows me because I pull into the driveway. He follows me into the driveway. Now this officer, Officer Palantino, that's his name. I'll never forget his name, okay. right? He yes, comes up yes, and he's walking up on me and he's like, who the hell do you think you are driving this out in the street? So now right. right away, because he approached me the way that he did and I was young and I was buck, right. I told him, I said, man, That's listen, right. man. I said, don't walk up on me like that. I said, you That's have right. no business coming up on my yard. So now he, pulls, right. he pulls out his baton and flings it out and says, get down on your knees. I told him, I said, man, I'm not getting down on my knees. <laughs> He right, told right, me, right, he right, said, right. he said, you have about three seconds to get on your knees. I'm calling back up. He says, if you don't get down, I'm pulling my weapon. So now I get down on my knees. He locks my fingers right. behind my head and pulls me right. back all the way yeah. back to where I'm like in a U and he's got this yeah. cl- and he's got this club above my face. And he's telling me how yeah. he wants to smash my face open. Now all yeah. this because yeah. I was just driving a go-kart and I got live with him. I got flipped with him because he right. got flipped with me. Right. But the, the right. point that I share with that is this crap happens to me. And I wasn't in the hood. I wasn't around no yeah. high crime yeah. area. Yeah. I'm a yeah. white dude. I just ended yeah. up getting a little live with him. I ended up disrespecting yeah. his powers, what it was. Right, right, right. And see, and that's the nature of abuse. Because now, in his mind's eye, you don't talk back to me. Now, I don't know if they train that shit. I don't know if they teach that shit, but I happen to be a human being, and I know that it's a human malady that we have. And when you have a perverse uh, uh, a thirst for the execution of power, you and your you think that your what you think that you have is power. When your power is being challenged now, you will overreact. Now, as black men, I had to have a conversation with my son about his blackness and moving around in this country called America and how you're perceived and how you are interpreted. And it is the difference between life and death. You can't have a bad day. You know what I mean? Whereas the police shouldn't be able to have a bad day either because their bad day could be the difference between life and death and or uh, violating someone's constitutional and civil rights. But the fact of the matter is, if you are, as a person, a human being, Place into a position where your humanity has to be cut off to deal with that, then that profession shouldn't even be in existence. Because police, not all of them, the greater majority of them, I'm not uh, naive, and even though I sit in prison, I'm not naive to think that the majority of police are not good people. I have police in my family. So I know for a fact that that's not the case. And I don't, I don't sound like one of those white persons that's like, yo, I got black friends. But, you know what I'm saying? But I do. I do got black yeah, friends. Exactly. <laughs> so, so I don't want to come across like that. But at the same time, man, when we talking about humanity, man, you talking yeah. about being able to place yourself in somebody else's shoes. And the moment that you stop doing that as a profession or as a person, that's the moment that you have the uh, potential to harm somebody else, man, and not give a fuck about it. You know what I mean? All, all the time, and I, I deal with COs that say here, man, that are, for all intents and purposes, human beings, man. But there's a culture sometimes where they can't be human beings because you're dealing with some other human beings that are broken. 
And sometimes it's very difficult to deal with a broken human being every day, day in, day out. So this your stress level goes up. And when you you can't manage stress, ill things happen. And then when you're given an authority over somebody and you got some ill shit going on with you, you're going to have the ability to now mess somebody over. But I see the next man coming in, man. I want to thank uh, you, brother. What's your name? Because I didn't even get your name, bro. Man, my name is Thomas, man. Thomas, okay, cool. Listen, Thomas, man, I appreciate you. I want to say, man, shout out to the warden here because, man, the warden at this location, man, she's very uh, much into programming. Um, also, um, the special acts here, special acts allows for us, for the NLA, and I want to talk a little bit about the NLA, but we might not have time, but the National Lifers of America Association in Michigan is very progressive. The whole purpose of it is to create platforms and outreach pro uh, programs that would allow for us to do what we're doing here, and none of this would be possible at this prison if it wasn't for a warden that's all about programs, man. So shout out to the warden here, uh, uh, Ms. Horton. Shout out to Marty Terry, and that's the guy that you contacted and dealt with, and, and some of the staff here, man, because some of them are, in fact, uh, supportive of what we're doing. And this is a rarity, man. Not all prisons in, in the MDOC, Michigan Department of Corrections, allow for this shit to take place, man. We might have a few more minutes, but I saw a guy coming, and I didn't, I didn't know, but I just wanted to get that out because it's very, very important, man, and I'm going to give credit with credit. Yeah, no, yeah, you no know question. Saying? And have somebody from the MLA um, reach out to me. And and okay, um cool. yeah, have them reach out to me and and um and the, go ahead. This is what I need you to do. This is what I need you to do, bro. Uh, send a friend request to Dion Riganil. Dion Riganil, man, that's my support system. That's my uncle, man. That's like a father, brother to me, friend, confidant, man. That's my my number one supporter, man. He go hard, man. How you and, I, and how you up, spell it? Dion is D I O N. That's his first name, Riggin. Il. That's R I G G E N dash E L. Okay. Holler at him on Facebook. Send a, fr a Facebook friend request. Cause I'm gonna have him holler at your joint anyways. Have send a Facebook friend request to him, man. Let him know that we did what we did, and you'll be able to see some of the stuff that we're into, man. We trying to push this movement. Um, 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 uh, free people, free people. Uh, the NLA is hooked up with uh, another organization by the name of Chance Steps to Life. Steps to Life is uh, headed by a beautiful sister who's like a mother to me, uh, Aldina Godspeed, and this is recorded, so maybe, you know, so you can go back and Google her and whatnot and get the contact information, but I don't have it off the top of my head right now. Yeah, you're uh, on YouTube, partner. Okay, cool. So, 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 uh, another organization by the name of um, Prisoners Doing the Right Thing, which was started by one of the OGs up here, if you will, and brother got out, man, after doing 30 some odd years, man, and had an aneurysm and died, bro, mm -hmm. within like the first year of him being out, man. And the people that took his mantle and carrying that thing and put it on their shoulders is a sister by the name of, um, uh, uh oh, she's gonna kill me for this. Uh, uh, my sister, uh, 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 Robin Sykes, please forgive me, Robin, if you hear this thing. I don't don't jump on me. I just got a life scrambling in my head right now. Robin is like a mother to me, a big sister to me. She took the mantle of prisoners doing the right things from Timothy Kincaid, aka Shock T, and she's taking it to another level. They're very inclusive. They're very aggressive. They doing their thing, man. And we're linked up with these organizations and my organization uh, with my uncle, the Prisoner Project. We're all family, man. We put a Juneteenth slash uh, expungement rally on on Juneteenth where and some of the guys that I rock with, man, that has been recently exonerated. They was out there. You can see excerpts of that on my uncle's uh, web page. I mean, on uh, uh, Facebook page. Um, my man Marvin uh, Cotton, man, it's a guy, man. We grew up together, man. He was exonerated, let up out of here because he didn't do this shit. My man Danny Boy, Daniel Jones, man, who works for American Friends of Service Committee. He did 20, I think, 4 or 26 years in the joint. He got resentenced to, uh, you know, because he's a juvenile lifer, out there showing people what someone who might have committed a harm, what it looks like to, to have real real prison reconstruction or transformation, not just reform. I talk to these guys, man, weekly, man. I talk to these guys monthly to make sure I stay plugged in, and they hold me down, and they hold the, the fort down in terms of this platform that we're trying to do, man. So it's, it's very important that I get them up out of there because I said I was going to do it. A lot of the comrades and the brothers that's in the housing units right now, they can't talk the way that I'm talking. I'm speaking for them, not in the way of leadership because we don't believe in that and talking about one leader. No, man, we're grown men, man, who are fathers, who are brothers, and who conscious of what the hell is going on around us, and we won't change, and we want an opportunity to fix the neighborhoods that we fucked up. That's simple and plain, man. Without all the eloquence, that's all we want to do. Yeah, no question, man. And spread the love in there, man. Tell the fellas about me, man. Tell the fellas about the channel, Free Me Podcast. Okay, it's Free Me Podcast. Free yep. Me. Yep, all they got to do is they tell their family to um to Google. If they just Google free me as one word, free me podcast, all my stuff will come up. 
So oh, that's what's up, man. I, I, I want to start. Platform. Yeah, I want. I, I want to start. Like, I want to start reading uh, people's poetry, dog, because I know there's a lot of a lot of dudes in there that be writing some deep ass poetry, man. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, you know some cats uh, that I got in there. A few guys with that. I got you. Spoken word, I got a couple guys, man. I got a couple guys that's uh, that's that's, that's into that. I mean, obviously, because you know, you, you could throw a, a, a rock and find a poet up in the joint. You know yeah. how that shit go. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I definitely spread that word, man, because um, we just we just want a platform by which we can show our humanity, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, some of us are more outspoken than others. And by way of outspoken, I just mean you know very passionate. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, man, you know, water finds its level. So in other words, to say, man, when you, you're you going to see a common theme amongst the guys that have access to you because they into the shit that we into. That's how me and Trinity, because we into the same stuff in terms of our growth and, and our outlook on life and the men that we want to be and the men that we want to present uh, uh, to the world. So, you know, that, that's very, very important, man, to us, me specifically, because like I say, man, I speak for the lifers and the long and determined sentence people, man. Some of the guys that done lost their minds up in here, man. Man, you you've been in here and you did a stress so you know man some guys really fall under the weight of the kind of time that they want us to do mental health is serious man you know i read somewhere they said in michigan man one out of five uh prisoners in the mdoc is mentally ill now i'm not that good in math but i know that one out of five is 20 percent Mm. So you're talking about 20% of this population that has some form of mental illness. Well, those 20% are affecting the 80% because I got to deal with this shit. You see what I'm saying? And you don't think that I have some things that may or may not be going on in the way of stressors and anxieties uh, uh, dealing with the mentally ill. And I'm not blaming the brothers and sisters that are mentally ill because they're mentally ill. That means literally that their brains are wired a different way. What I am saying is we went through this thing called COVID. And we didn't have any counselors. It was us that held each other down. So us holding each other down, us doing what we need to do, is indicative of us making the change. So the next man is coming in. I want to thank everybody that's listening that will have potential help. And just pretty much, man, give us a shot at life. Give us a shot as human beings. And um, be well, Thomas, man. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, stay safe, man. Stay safe, bro. Yeah, ain't no doubt. Ain't no doubt. Peace. Here go the next brother. Free me podcast.